hi and welcome to another episode of the gold mind i am your host casey bell and today's guest is suki jeffries let's get this show started and did you were you raised in an entrepreneur home no not at all uh, my mother my mother was a, a registered nurse and my father my uh my birth father, who died when I was five, he was a chemical engineer. He worked for a paint com company in Canada. And then when my mom remarried, um, she married a minister. So he was always employed by a church. So yeah, no, golly, not even anybody in our close family were, were entrepreneurs that, well, when my mother remarried, my, my dad's, my new dad's uh, some of his uh, siblings and in-laws were were entrepreneurs. When did you understand entrepreneurship for yourself? When did you get to the point of understanding what it was? Well, that's really interesting because uh, about 20 years ago, um, I got really involved in an art form called mosaics. And that's, um, you know, tile and glass and stone um, using small pieces to make, uh, you know, a bigger image. And I loved it. And I start, I decided that I loved it so much. I needed to make it pay. Like I had to pay for my habit. So I started reselling art supplies for mosaic artists online. Uh, and I eventually bought out my supplier after about a year. And, um, and I had that business for four years and I really enjoyed it. Um, but I was just kind of like, just kind of doing it. It's like, okay, today I have to place orders today. I have to do this. I wasn't really thinking about it as like a lifestyle and something that could really support me. Um, so I didn't really understand the kind of entrepreneur that I am now back then. Um, so I yeah, asked kind of a complicated rambling answer, but <laughs> there you go. When did you, I'm assuming you, you, and when you first started working, you were not an entrepreneur. So when did you get to that point where you thought that maybe this is something you should do full time? Well, um, I, I was doing the art supplies full time um, and I had I was a technology consultant and I had been uh, let go of my job because the, I was working for a bank and the bank bought another bank and they had all kinds of technology people. So they didn't need consultants like me anymore. So I was really kind of, um, uh, not, I did, I thought this is the perfect opportunity, but, um, doing what I'm doing now, I'm a life coach and a courage expert. And, um, I started doing that after I retired from my, what I call my corporate drone job. So after I had my my first company, I went back to work because um, we had a, a daughter who was going to go to a very expensive school. And I wanted to, you know, we, my husband and I both wanted her not to have a lot of debt. So I went back to my tech job because it paid a lot more, you know, than the, the art supply business. But um, yeah, I really started taking on entrepreneurship with like taking the bull by the horns after I retired from my corporate technology job when I was about uh, I think I probably started in earnest when I was about 60. What was it about, um, I guess you can say, what kind of experiences did you have yourself that caused you to realize you were helpful or an expert in helping other people with their courage? Well, it's, it's interesting. Um, I think it's interesting. I was, I decided um, after I retired, I actually did have a, a job in network marketing. So I was, a, I was a rep for 31 gifts and I thought, well, if I'm really going to make a go of this, I'm going to um, start networking and meeting people and that kind of thing. And so I started doing um, personal development work. I, I found a coach who had a mastermind group that I, that I um, joined up with and Oh gosh, and I've lost a train of thought. I've lost the question. <laughs> what was it? Um, what kind of experience did you have in your own life? Thank you. To... Thank you. So um, when I was consistently not doing the things I needed to be to do to be successful in um, in sales in the sales uh, area, I did some. My my coach had me do an exercise, and it was uh, about what is it that what is it that's really unique about you? And um, 
I wrote a bunch of things down. I didn't think too much about it, just kept writing and writing. And one of the words that I wrote down was courage, because at 23 years old, I'd had a friend tell me that I was courageous because uh, I broke an engagement to be married. And back in the 80s, as with probably even now and, and years and years before, women were, you know, the, the, that was the deal. You get to a certain age or you go to college, as I did anyway, and then you were going to get married and build a life and have children and a home and live happily ever after. And I, I broke that mold. And a friend of mine said, boy, that was a really courageous thing to do. So you were really brave to do that. And I hadn't really thought of it at that time. It just felt like self-preservation to me. But her calling it brave allowed me to sort of integrate it into who I believed I was. And, um, and then over the years, I made a lot of courageous decisions. And then as I sat down to do this exercise, um, which I call uh, what the hell's so great about you? <laughs> That's kind of my tongue in cheek name for it. But um, this word courage kept jumping off the page. And I thought, you know, I have a lot of experience with this. I have a lot of experience making courageous decisions, even if they're outside the norm. And, um, uh, you know, I was talking with my coach and, and I said, you know, I really want to help people be more courageous. And she said, well, why don't you do that then? It was the first time it occurred to me that I could, uh, I could really do something that helped people that actually made money. Um, and so that's kind of how I got there. You know, I, I had, you know, I had broken, actually I had a couple of broken engagements. I had moved around the world by myself. When I was 30, I moved to Australia. I didn't know anybody. I did have a job, but I didn't know anybody. Um, and, you know, when I got back, I became a traveling consultant. I traveled all over the United States uh, with my tech job, um, you know, solving problems and helping people implement large projects. And, um, you know, I, I waited to get married. I, I did marry finally at 39. So I, I waited a long time to get married. And, the, and then it was kind of like, I don't need you, I, but I want you in my life. Um, so it's kind of a a different way than some people look at it. And um, anyway, yeah, I just have a lot of experience. And then I've uh, been getting a lot of coaching. I have a few um, certification classes that I took. And one of them was as a courage expert um, with uh, Katie Drasnan was my coach from the, the journey within. And that's how I got to where I am. How, what would you say was, um, the thing that gave you courage, because as you said, you know, definitely in America, there is a mold you're supposed to live, you know, go to college, get a job, get married, have children, retire, mm -hmm. and then get amnesia and forget everything. <laughs> and the moment you decide, I don't want to do that, they attack you with condemnation, forgetting that that's actually the opposite of democracy. That's more communism and, you know, dictatorship of everyone has to be exactly the same and no one can be different. Of process, yes. Mm -hmm. And then you have people, you know, as they say, midlife crisis is because they're not living the way they want to live because they're scared because they're afraid that they're going to be looked at as wrong because they didn't follow the same mold. So what would you say and what would you tell people who you're coaching? What is it that causes you to say, I'm going to do this regardless of what everyone's thinking. Well, it's not easy, Casey. Um, the minute you establish a goal for yourself, a big goal, um, like helping people, um, your brain puts up all kinds of resistance, you know, and it um, a lot of people, myself very much included, I started thinking, oh, you can't do that. You know, it's, it's outside the mold. You can't do that. And no one's ever sort of shown you or told you, you could do that. Um, and you don't have what it takes and people aren't going to want to listen to what you have to say and all of that kind of stuff. And I, um, I've, I strongly believe in coaching and I believe in, in having a really strong vision and really drilling down on it. Like when I was in corporate America, they used to say, well, you know, what are your five-year goals? Well, I never had any five-year goals because um, I was going to do what the job demanded, right? Now that I was on my own and building my own business, I did need to, especially being over 60, you know, realistically, there aren't that many years left. Like if 
uh, if I was learning all this stuff and, and starting this business out when I was 25 or 30, I would have had a lot of years um, to work on it and build it into um, what it needs to become. But because I'm over 60 and I want to build, um, you know, I'm probably ready maybe to retire when I'm 75. You know, I don't really have that many years left. So I have to plan all of my years as each as if each day counts. And um so uh, vision is super important. And I, I would write down my vision and then I would go, then I would write down all the things I'm vision. I'd go into a, a, an exercise of why, why do you want that thing? Why do you want a beautiful house? Why do you want, you know, uh, this thing? And then after I got that, why I would go another level. So I went like three and four levels deep to find out what really was going to motivate me because change is hard and it's hard to be courageous and buck the norms, push back on your brain who's trying to keep you safe, but, you know, in an unnecessary way at this point, um, you have to have something compelling that's going to help you take those baby steps forward. And so I think understanding in a very kind of visceral level where you want to be and moreover who you want to be in five years or in 10 years or in 15 years, um, it's really important. And, and that's going to be hard. Anyone who's never set a plan or a goal or a vision like that, they're going to have all kinds of resistance coming up in their head and fear like, oh, I, I don't know how to make a five-year plan, you know, or if I have a five-year vision. Um, you know, if that's too much, do it for six months or do it for a year and say, you know, where, who is it that I want to be? What is it that I want to be doing? you know, and take small steps. You know, the only thing that ever changed the world were, was, were people making small steps towards a, a vision of the future. Yes, so much so. So tell us the name of your business and your future client. When they sign up with you, what can they expect? Sure. So the name of my business is Courage Rises LLC. And um, I'm, I'm a coach. And what people can expect is um, I usually start out with a discovery call to find out what people, what my client wants to do and see if we're a good fit because I'm not going to fit with everybody and they're not going to fit with everybody. Right. We want to make sure that that's a good fit. Um, I am, uh, I am geared towards women who have retired or who are about to retire. So I'm basically looking for, for women like me. Um, who have retired or are about to be retired, and they feel that there's something more that they have to offer. And like in my case, I have a lot of energy, and I'm you know pretty smart. I I wasn't ready to be done. I wasn't going to retire and sit on the couch, um, uh, you know, and be a lady that lunched. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but that just doesn't suit me. And so um, I just knew that there was more, and I didn't after doing some of these exercises, I really believed that I hadn't uh, been doing the things that really brought joy to my life. Uh, and so that's what I'm looking for is women who are, are uh, wanting more in some area. It could be a business. It could be just, they want to make a greater impact by getting involved with social causes or, uh, or social justice causes or um, nonprofits, charities, that sort of thing, or people who even just um, women who just want to get better relationships with their family and their kids. Um, so what you can expect is we do a discovery call, find out what it is you're working towards. And then I would gear a, uh, a coaching program. I'd write up, um, you know, a coaching program that would involve vision setting and goal setting and um, meeting however often a month we decide um, to monitor, you know, part of, well, the huge part of success is being accountable to yourself for the decisions you've made. And I can help you, I can help these women confront their accountability. Um, like I did, or I didn't do these things and let's figure out why. Is it because your purpose, the thing that you're moving towards isn't really what's, you know, you don't have a motivation to push beyond the discomfort of change in that way? Or, um, you know, is it because you're just afraid? And if you're afraid, there are so many ways to deal with that fear um, 
to, to be able to take those steps towards, you know, making what you want to happen, happen. Yes, I would say for me, um, anytime I would decide to make a decision to do something, one of the number one thing, fear I would ask is why am I afraid? And the number one answer would be because I'm afraid to make a mistake. And yep. I realized the reason why we fear mistakes is because we've been taught our whole life when you make a mistake, your life is over. Even, you, you know, you're getting a spanking, um, you're going to hell, um, principal's office, even me being in customer service for over 20 years. Oh, gosh. I, God yeah, bless you. You, know, you make a, 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 a mistake and you apologize. The thing is, you get screamed and cursed at and it's like, well, don't we all make mistakes? And we have this mindset that there's, you know, you've just murdered someone after you've made a mistake. And mm. so people are afraid to move because they're afraid something horribly bad is going to happen to them for making a mistake. And yes. I do know that that's something you have to overcome that. Yeah, okay, someone may yell at you, someone may curse at you, that's fine. At the end of the day, you'll never know, you'll never learn if you do not make mistakes. And that's one of the things we know about Thomas Edison is he didn't get that light bulb the very first time, you know, he had I, to- Yeah, such mistakes. a simple story, right? He failed how many hundreds of times? before that happened. You know, I have a coach whose podcast that I listen to, her name is Brooke Castillo from the Life Coach School. And one of her podcasts talks about if you're not failing five times a day, you're not learning enough. You know, you're, you're, I don't know, I think she's telling you, you're not being bold enough. You're not, you know, making, um, you're not making enough strides to move forward. And um, I, I don't like to admit that I make five that I fail five times a day and maybe I'm not moving fast enough, you know, because I need to fail more often. But if you think of it more as infer, you know, failure is information that you're receiving or feedback. Um, and then you adjust, you know, I love this story. I actually heard it from John Cleese. He was speaking at a management conference that I was a guest at. And um, he talked about uh, NASA and how they build rockets to the moon. And it's not like you set a course and you wait till you get there to see if you made it. It's like they are constantly interrogating their trajectory and making small adjustments. So it's like, go this way. Ooh, not good. This way, not good. That way, not good. That way, you know, until they figure out the proper trajectory to get to the moon. And, you know, when I, when you think about failure each time, you know, whatever their calculations had failed, oh, we're just going to adjust. And that's how I want to deal with failure in my life is I'm just going to learn from it and adjust. And it's a lot harder than it sounds, as you probably know. Yes. Yeah. So with that said, um, for those out there, because I don't believe no one has courage. I believe we all have courage. We just don't exercise it. And there's a different, you know, it's kind of like we all have muscles. It's just that not everyone exercises it. So can you give just one tip, one suggestion, one idea to the person out there who says, oh, I have no courage. Just one thing they can do differently starting today. Okay. So there's a really simple thing and it's, it's, it's going to sound like a, a grade school exercise, but um, when you start feeling fear and f fear to me is any kind of discomfort about moving towards what you want or what you've decided. If you start feeling that fear, um, take that fear if you can and isolate it and give it a name. Like, I mean, it could be Brad, it could be Suki, it could be Casey. You know, um, I, I, I know of people who have named that fear, they've named it like the Mucinex monster from the TV ads or, or Boo Radley from To Kill a Mockingbird. You know, he's just kind of in the dark all the time. Nobody knows much about him. You know, give it a name and talk to it. And that gets it out of your head. It because I mean, you could even stand up. Um, I can't really see that. Look, get a little box for my, what is this? Selfie stick. And you can, you know, put something on your table and look at it and give it a name and say, you are my fear and start talking to it. Um, and asking why, you know, why, why am I feeling this? Why are you making me feel this? Cause I don't want to. And, um, you know, once you get it out of your head and give it a name, it's a little less scary, you know, um, because you know how to talk to a thing and talk to a person. Um, 
So uh, that's one of the, the simple tips. It sounds like a grade school trick, but it's, it can be very powerful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, mm. That is funny enough. I just recently started doing that when I would hear. Did you? Yeah, you can't. I would just talk to the, because most times it would give me a reason why I can't. Mm -hmm. And I would say, well, I do have this, even though I don't have that. And, you know, well, you're not good enough. Well, maybe I'm not. I can still do this and see and present it and submit it. And, you know, because you never when people say, oh, I can't because they're going to reject me. And it's like, well, they may. The thing is, you'll never know for sure until you do it. And so right. I've learned how to have a conversation, not argue because, you know, just have a conversation with that those voices. And it makes me um, even in fear move forward and it how do I say this it you, it makes you freer yes as far because it, it gets it out of you it's not holding you so so tightly anymore yes yes mm -hmm. I feel, I'm, I'm glad you're using that tip yes well I've decided one of the things I had to, to realize is that fear can either be your master or your slave and if it's your master then you become a slave to fear and yep. you just feel it makes you angry and frustrated because there's things you want to do mm -hmm. and you don't do it because fear is telling you not to. Yep. So once I started having conversations with fear and letting it know that we can talk and you can say everything you need to say at the end of the day, I'm, I'm moving forward with this idea. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it, it, people may say, oh my gosh, that's crazy. That's weird. I said, it's working. Yes. But that's all I care. It's working. Give it a try. Yeah. Give it a try. And um, yeah, I, I like the way you, you think about that. It's, it's interesting. Um, you, you never know until you try. I just did my, my, I'm doing my social media posts now kind of on a theme for the week. And last week was you don't have to be amazing to start, but you have to start to be amazing. And if you didn't start and deal with some of those fears and that sort of thing, you, you wouldn't get to be amazing ever. You know, it just kind of shrinks your world down until you're, you're in a little box and you're, it, it's a frustrating place to be. It very much is so. Um, mm -hmm. And everyone we name amazing started somewhere yes. at, at the beginning. So, yes. Yep, absolutely. In fact, I, I got that saying from an ad for the Olympics and I, it might've even been the Paralympics. It's like, well, you, you, you know, you, you're not going to be the champion speed skater. You're not going to be Sean White. You know, you're not going to be um, Aaron Jackson until you start, you know, and they were, they weren't very good when they started. <laughs> awesome. So now somewhat off the um, subject, give one tip for the entrepreneur that, or the person, because, you know, nowadays people are saying, this climate is not the climate to become an entrepreneur. And one thing I will say is you don't have to quit your job. You should at least start something on the side. And so a tip to that person who really, obviously they can go get books, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. There's always though, every entrepreneur has something to give to someone that's not in a book. So a tip you can give to that entrepreneur or that want to be entrepreneur. So, um, Everything that I've learned about being an entrepreneur, especially over the last three or four years, has led me to believe that um, being successful is not necessarily what you're doing, but it's who you're being. And my tip is um, do some personal development and figure out the things that get in your way, um, figure out... Um, you know, your natural strengths and behaviors um, and learn to flex, you know, try and just try and be someone different. I'm, I am trying to be always someone who's more, um, who's more adherent to the commitments I make to myself. For instance, I'm, I'm losing weight and um, a commitment that I've made to myself is I'm going to go walk two miles every other day and um, holding yourself accountable to those commitments is what's going to make you successful. You know, so um, figure out who you're being and stretch and push and try and be better. And like you said, there are tons and tons of books out there about how you can do that. Um, 
the granddaddy of self-help books, I think, is Think and Grow Rich. It's a little hard to digest because the, the style and the wording and stuff is just a, a little bit archaic. But, um, you know, um, it, it's helping you to be someone different. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. My last question in your journey, have you ever heard of or read um, or met a entrepreneur that was a inspiration to you? And if so, who is this person and what was it about this person? Oh gosh, there are so many. Um, I'd say the most recent one is one of my coaches. Her name is Kenyatta Turner. She's with Freedom Empire Consulting in Phoenix, Arizona, which is where I live. And um, she is unstoppable. Uh, and um, she's inspiring to me because of the confidence that she's built up in herself. Like I said, who you're being, she is being a very confident, she's confident in her message. She's confident in her delivery of the message. She's confident that she's going to reach her goals. And I, I would never ever bet against her on any, on any subject, you know, <laughs> well, relating to uh, be, being uh, being a business owner and and that kind of thing, I, I wouldn't bet against her ever. That is all the time we have for you today on the Gold Mine. I want to thank our guest Suki Jeffries for stopping on by and sharing her insight and journey, and for you, the audience, for watching. Thank you. Have a great.